Hello, today I'm going to be going through part two of the uh, incomplete record question on Hassan, question two from ACCN3, June 16. So in part one, we looked at revenue, cost of sales, and we calculated gross profit, and that's where we finished off. Moving on, part two is going to cover the section after gross profit which includes additional income, expenses, and final profit. Looking at the question on the right-hand side, there is no information to do with additional income. So for this section, you can skip and move over onto expenses. Okay, so no additional income that we need to consider. We can move straight on to expenses. The first thing I would do is have a look at the data and perhaps using a highlighter, highlight any potential expenses. Okay, so we have inventory, trade payables, trade receivables, they are all assets and liabilities. Cash in hand, again, nothing to do with expenses. We've got a prepayment of rent and wages, accruals, so I would consider those as expenses. So rent and wages need to be on your list. You then have assets, and assets have fallen in value. Okay, so potentially depreciation there. We have some ratios, etc. No relevance to expenses. Information to do with sales under control. Again, we can ignore. 0.5, we can ignore. 0.6. Here they're informing us that we didn't purchase any assets nor were there any disposals, i.e. what they are referring to here is there was no disposal, so there was no profit on disposal, nor was there any loss on disposal, of which they would need to be considered within the income statement. So we don't need to worry about any disposals. Okay. Number seven, doesn't affect uh, expenses, a cancelled check, We've got PLC information, nothing relevant for expenses. We have a supplier that's charged Hassan for not settling his account. So a supplier has charged us because we haven't settled and that is an expense. So point number nine, interest payable. Okay, interest payments to suppliers. Number 10 is a contra, we can ignore. Number 11 is rent and wages, which we already have on our list. And we'll look at that in a moment. We have drawings, which is not an expense, so we can ignore. And then we have all other expenses were paid by check. These are general expenses. There is no figure for this. So general expenses is another expense we need to be aware of. Last point, Hassan suspects that a dishonest employee may have stolen cash and inventory. We know this. We looked at it in part one, where we calculated stolen inventory. Okay. And what they're mentioning here is any losses, so if there was any loss of cash or any loss of inventory stolen, insurance does not cover that. So who is going to cover it? The business. And if the business is going to cover it, it is going to be an expense. So expect AQA, they're hinting at you. You know, an, a dishonest employee may have stolen both cash and inventory. And the reason why they're saying that is because most likely it would have happened and we've seen inventory stolen in part one okay so there is probably going to be stolen cash uh, which we, we will work through okay so we have seven expenses that we need to look at get the easy ones out of the way first and so they are stolen inventory we've worked it out in part one that is your first expense the second expense is this here point number nine it's 340 pound it's readily available so expense number two so those are your two expenses that are ready to go into your income statement the third expense is this here Okay, so we have assets that were worth 59500 at the start of 2015. And 2016, 
they have fallen in value. This is depreciation of 8250, expense number three. Okay, you don't need to worry about reducing balance method and straight line method. You don't need to worry about calculating it. The figures are given there above. It might be different for another incomplete record question where you've got to work it out. But here, it's quite straightforward. There's no information in here whatsoever to do with different methods of depreciation. They mentioned there no additions, no disposals. Nice and easy, the difference between the two. Okay, so we've got, we have um, depreciation, stolen inventory, and the other one that we have that was ready for us is that one there. So we've got three figures there so far. Okay, the next one is a cash account. How do we find out if, if, if cash was stolen? We do a cash account. We put in the debit side, what came in, what went out, we balance it off and we find out the missing figure. So we have 150 to start with and 175 to end with. Cash can only be positive. It can only have a debit balance at the start, which means a credit balance at the end. So we've got 150, 175. Look through the information, anything to do with cash, flag it, and you need to put it into the T account. So one, two, three, we can ignore point number four. We had cash received from trade receivables. Customers gave us cash. So we put that in to the cash account. Okay, so we put that in to the cash account. Hassan banked £18,000 of cash. So from the cash that we received from customers, he took some money to the bank. He took 18000 to the bank. So that is going to go out of cash, out of cash into bank. So we started off with 150. We had that come in. 45k and we had 18,000 going out that that went into our bank account he used some of the cash to pay himself and suppliers and if we go to the supplier section we paid suppliers he paid suppliers 11590 so that is money going out of our cash account the next point on the list that is relevant to cash. Contra is, is nothing is not is not relevant. Rent and wages we can ignore. Uh, point twelve, he took drawings of twelve fifty per month for twelve months. Twelve fifty times by twelve is fifteen thousand pounds. That's how much he had in drawings. So in summary, we have an opening, we have a closing, we have money coming in from sales, we've got money going into our bank account, we've got money for suppliers drawings that he took and if you add up these two take it across check the figures you'll find that it doesn't add up and the reason for that is because there is 900 pounds missing okay and now if you add all of these up if you add them all up it will equal to 45665 so it's a straightforward t account put the figures in balance it off if it doesn't balance then it most likely will be stolen cash and that is the fourth expense the next one is wages okay i'm pretty much just doing these in order that i think is um, most easy to most difficult so wages is next so we have we have wages in arrears so this, these are wages outstanding at the start of the year. Um, and by now you should have you should have a good understanding of how to calculate accruals and prepayments. So I'm not going to go through this in detail. It, it is something that you should have covered before looking at incomplete records. So wages in arrears, they are outstanding at the start of the year. So it's a liability. It's, it's outstanding. It's a liability at the start of the year. So we have a credit balance for 005. We then refer to point number 11, where we have wages that were paid through the bank, 15665, credit the bank, debit wages. So we've got figure number two. Figure number three, we have accruals at the end of the year. So that is going to increase what goes to our income statement. Accruals, they are outstanding. We need to include them. So we add them in. And then you balance off the account 
So we have opening balance, closing balance, bank. We add these two together, take it across, and the missing figure is what will go to your income statement. Likewise, rent will follow. So we have a prepayment at the start of the year. That is an asset to us. We have paid our rent in advance. So our landlord owes us. Okay, so this is an asset at the start of the year. We have rent was paid. So we have a bank figure, credit the bank, debit rent, 5,900. We have figure number two. We have a a prepayment at the end of the year. So that will be accounted for next year. So we take it out at the moment. So we credit the balance, uh, credit the account. So we have opening, closing, bank. Add these two together, take it across, and find the missing figure for your income statement. So far, that's what the breakdown looks like. Gross profit we worked out before, and these are all the expenses that we've calculated. We've got a question mark for that and a question mark for that. So what they've mentioned in the question is profit is 5% of revenue. Our revenue is 225 from part one we calculated this. 5% is our profit. Now if our gross profit is 56,250 and our net profit is 11,250, the difference between is our expenses, which is 45,000. And at the moment, if you calculate all the expenses that we've done so far, they total up to 38. 445. According to this, if gross profit is 56 and net profit is 11, expenses should be 45. So the difference is 655. That is the missing figure. Okay. Now, 56250, this is from part one. You can refer to that. We've, we've got that from part one. Um, and in summary, we've calculated 16 triple, 16. 660 as wages, double 545 as rent, stolen cash was 900, that was from the T account that we put together, stolen inventory 6750, that was from part one, which we calculated. Depreciation has come from the two figures. Interest payable has come straight from point number nine. General expenses has come from using this 5% of revenue is profit. I'll just refer back to that again. 5% of revenue is profit. And if our net profit is 11,250 and our gross profit is 56,250, the difference between the two is our expenses, which is 45. But if you add up the expenses at the moment, they total up to 38,445. They should add up to 45. The missing figure is 655 okay that has been mentioned in point number 13 they never gave you a general expenses figure they've not told you they've not given you any indication the only way to calculate that is by leaving it last okay because these we're able to calculate them we have figures we have data to calculate these okay however general expenses there's nothing in here whatsoever that tells us this and this is purely a skill for incomplete records okay it is a skill that you need to develop and identify what comes first and what comes last uh, so in summary all of our expenses total up to 45 gross profit 56 general expenses 45 take one away from the other that leaves you with your final profit for the year and we've like I said, we've calculated that using the 5% information here based on our revenue. Um, and that is the latter part to this question. Hope you found it useful and um, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.